All right, I think it's recording. Um, hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, February 23rd, at least where I am right now. And you are at the DEI working group meeting. So really happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us, either live or after the fact. Here's the minutes one more time. Everybody has that, but um, yeah. So I'm the facilitator today. Let me share screen. Oh, I almost hit the leave button. That'd be bad. The what button? The leave. I don't. It. I don't know oh. why. My my hand just gravitated over towards the little red leave button. Like I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> <clears throat> that would have been bad. Okay. I hope everybody's doing good. If you did not add your name to the agenda yet and you would like to do that, that would be awesome. As always with every chaos meeting, you do not have to turn your camera on. We do not care um, either way. So yeah, leave it off if you want or turn it on. It's totally fine. First item on the agenda is to pick a facilitator for next week. Do we have any takers? Where's the meme? Yeah, we need our meme. Um, I can try for the next week. I'm not sure if I will do a great job, but I can give it a try. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. That was Christy, right? That said that. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. That's exciting. Great. Yeah, but I think um, Liz, that's where the dog comes in, the one that we were sharing in the previous. <laughs> yeah. Enoch yeah. knows what's coming. <laughs> um, Christy, we will get to this later in the agenda, but I have written a little doc on like how to facilitate our meetings. So hopefully that will help you. Perfect, thank you. And I will say too, Christy, like, and maybe we'll talk about it later, but a lot of people just add agenda items. So it's not like you have to collect all the agenda items ahead of time. We all just drop them in over the course of the week. Okay, nice. Then you do not have to know but like what the deal is with that item. You just be like, who added this? Who wants to talk about this thing that they added? So it's pretty, it's pretty uh, informal, pretty casual, as okay. you can probably tell. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, and Matt put the, the meme in there. Thank you, Matt. Oh, uh, I put the meme in the chat. I also put that facilitation doc you've been working on in the um, first in the middle. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Then um, we'll just talk about that now. I'm going to move number six up to number one. Uh, so I, I wrote this little doc. It's a one page thing for anybody who wants to facilitate a chaos meeting. It's pretty generic. I probably left stuff out. So feel free to add something if I mess, messed it up or whatever. Um, before the meeting, here's some things to do during the meeting. And then after the fact, you don't have to do anything like we'll upload it to YouTube and all of that good stuff. So um, it's pretty straightforward, but if you have any questions on that, Christy, um, let me know for sure. Let me know. Not a big deal at all. And I didn't know where to put this because I feel like it should go in the handbook, but handbook. Yep. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put it there. <laughs> yeah. And no I think problem. until we do redo the website, we just like keep just like, let's just keep putting things where they should go. And okay. Then, you know. I'm gonna do that. I will do that. And um, I'm gonna, as a, as a side point, I think I had a, another one or two PRs out there for the community handbook. I'm just gonna merge them. Is that cool? Like, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So any, any other comments, questions, anything I see there's another, okay. Uh, so, um, that, that brings up a good point. Actually, Matt, Matt Snell pointed to this repo, but that's not actually the repo where Gitbook pulls it from. Oh, I didn't even know. There's another, yeah, there's a different one, um, which I found and now I've lost. I think it's- It's in the community repo. Oh, maybe this was the one that was bad. Yes, okay. So 
The one you posted, Matt, was actually the right one. I'm so sorry. It looks like a, just a laundry list thing. The the um, re the references in the README on the actual repo are all broken. Okay. And the syntax must have changed or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't trust what language that is. Gibberish. <laughs> but yeah, the things are broken or something was not right. Yeah. Okay. So this is on my to-do list is to kind of go through this and sort it all out and clean okay. it up a little bit. I would so. just say too, like if uh, it appears we have two sort of locations. Yeah. yeah. So just, I would say just fully delete obviously the other one. Okay. You know how I feel about fully deleting things. <laughs> I okay. It. I love it. <laughs> It gives me anxiety, Matt. <laughs> it makes me feel so good. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll do some meditation before I do that. And then I'll be okay. I'll be ready to do it. I mean, the only thing to check would make sure that like what you're deleting isn't some, co some fancy content that we need. See, that's you know. Like, oh. Yes, that's my biggest fear in life. How about this download the download it to your local machine. You know what I mean? You can download that zip file and that'll make you feel good. And then yeah, it will. If it and then if it if you were like, where did that go? Then you can be like, I got it. It's all good. <laughs> okay. All right. I will do that. All right. It'll be an, a, a lesson in personal growth for me as well. <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the nudge. <laughs> That's why my house looks like it does though, because I'm just afraid that I'll need something and I won't have it. So it looks very clean from here. That's because this is the only section that is seen. This is the only <laughs> section in my entire house that is doable. So yes, the rest is literally like my whole desk literally is just everything is outside. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay. All right, so uh, anything else with the handbook stuff, facilitation guide, anything else? No, I mean, maybe the only other like kind of side comment, this is a lot for Enoch. Um, so right now it looks mm. like as we do the website redesign, mm -hmm. you know, in the sp spring and in the summer, um, we're gonna build a, a knowledge base on the site and the, the knowledge base is going to be really two things. One is it's going to be metrics and metrics models, like the things that we produce. Yeah. And the other is really going to be the handbook. So the handbook is going to be our single source of truth. And we're going to work to really make that the case. Yep, actually, um, I think that's where I ask two questions. One, is this the working group that takes up uh, the sorting of every information in the chaos community, like this is the right group that should be performing that task. I'm not, I, I think the that task will probably be handled by the website working group. You know? No, 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 I don't, I don't mean okay. specifically the website, but like general, taking over general information to put all that stuff together. So I'm not sure who should own that up. Since everybody's like, yeah, yeah, too much, too much. So nobody's owning it. I, I, I don't know that we have, it's, I don't think it necessarily lands here. Yeah. I just wanted to get clarity so that. Uh, yeah. You know, I think it's, my guess is that it's going to be rolled into the, I know it's not the website, but my guess is that activity is going to be rolled into our redesign of the website. And the reason that I think that is because the two are so closely related and I'm thinking of the people who will be involved in that redesign yeah. are largely the people that kind of know where all of our information is located and where the problem yeah. exists. Sure. Yeah, so I just, I, my guess. I, I just thought um, maybe somebody or a group should take it up so that um, it just stops floating all over 
the community? <laughs> We are. I mean, we're very conscious of it right now. I think you've done a great job of bringing this to the forefront. And so, yeah, but then, then to go ahead. Then to um, I just asking Liz, Elizabeth whether um, there is actually a place where all this metric documentation is placed apart from GitHub. Someone can just go and read through the descriptions um, apart from GitHub and the docs that we use for editing. Ah, so you're looking for a place where we can refer to the metrics, right? Yes, yeah, just okay. Asking. I dropped it in chat here. Uh, it's a it's the main <laughs> list of all the all the metrics on one page. Ah, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, we can go. In. That was just um some quick question. This um this does kind of um make me think about maybe um, information management should be more of a focus. Um, that might be something to say here uh, of the chaos community, uh, mostly in like making sure it's centralized and easy to access. That might go in with onboarding, it might go in with the web server designer, it might be pertinent in both. Agreed. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. I mean, this is, I think this is not necessarily unique to the chaos project this is what happens when communities grow and work occurs in different working groups across different time zones with different groups of people um and so i just i and i don't think it's been a terrible problem for the chaos project and i still don't think it's terrible yet so i think it's great that we're taking a look at it now um and and honestly maybe it's something that we kind of document our process on elizabeth to help others like <laughs> you know as you have people working you know in the evenings on tuesdays and as you have people working in the mornings on fridays and you have meetups that are occurring in other parts of the world like information gets generated all over the place by all the community members and it's all great information but you do have to be very deliberate about keeping that clean. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I think it's it's an interesting part of, of chaos's journey, a, a growing pain for sure. And maybe it maybe this is something for the common working group, but um, it might make sense to have, um, I think as Enoch was suggesting, like one or two people, a small team of people that are like our documentation team. So if you do something, just let the documentation team know so they can add it or, mm -hmm. or something like that, or there's like a central like owner of, of the docs, of the information. And I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense, but it might be an idea for us. It does, it makes sense. Yeah, because if someone doesn't take this up or if a group doesn't take this up, it's just going to be floating and we're just sure we are aware of it, but yeah, we're just aware and waiting on to maybe the summer or another option from somebody else who may be more concerned. So yeah, it's just trying to re-echo Elizabeth's submission. Yeah. All right. Um, any final thoughts on this before we move on? I appreciate this conversation. Yeah, me too. Especially from the newcomer perspective, it's super helpful. Yeah, okay. and also that, <laughs> but, but I think, um, I don't know whether much you're okay with um, us um, maybe suggesting to the community so that someone owns this app. If it's the website people, yeah, we're like, yeah, the website people will do that when the time comes. So if it's another working group, and we can say, yeah, the commons are responsible for that. Or the DEI, since it's a diversity inclusion thing. Yeah, so I think um, we can. Yeah, I think we let's start with that. I, I would also like to get um, input from other chaos community members who may have been through this process before because there are a lot of people in the community who are 
very experienced open source community members and managers, and they may have some insight as well as to good steps forward here. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, um, let's go ahead and move on because we do have some other things to talk about and we have to do that this week because it's our last week. Um, so we are we have two metrics in progress um, that I think are gonna be candidates for our metrics freeze, our metrics release coming up. Oh wait, is this something different? Project overview is different. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Let's do that. Let's talk about this. Who wants to talk about it? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what we're doing, but it's on the agenda. There was an action item, I think with regard to that, Matt C. Oh, and he did that, okay. Oh, um, no, I added, I added one. I, I put the wrong link in there. I added one for the badging, but not the inclusive aiming. So I'll go ahead and do that. Sorry about that, I missed Okay, it. oh, no worries, no worries at all. Totally fine. Okay, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead then and talk about our metrics. Um, so I think these two, project demographics and event accessibility are our two. Um, mm -hmm. Did we have any others that I'm missing? I don't think so. Okay. So our metrics freeze is on March 1, which is next week. Um, so this is our last meeting before that. Do we wanna look at this real quick or no, Matt? Well, demographics is, I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah. much done. I need to go because we spent time, maybe even the last two weeks. There are just a few things that I need to do in that issue checklist to sign off on. You know, like make sure there's an issue in the translation repo. Right, right. Yep. The issue metrics checklist. And in case someone is curious about what that is, um, just click on that issue. Yeah. yeah. So when we release the metric, we, we've worked on it in the Google Doc and we say, okay, this is ready. We think it's pretty good as it is. So we have a, a, a metric quality checklist here. We open an issue in the repo and this kind of helps us make sure we've ticked all the boxes with regard to what needs to happen. Um, because the metrics get put into a PDF, automatically. So the formatting is a big deal. We want to make sure translations are included and that the metric gets translated. Um, we make sure we update our spreadsheet and, and do all of the things, put it on the website, all of the things that we need to do to make sure that that metric fits in everybody's requirements of all the moving parts of this machine. Um, so we had worked on this one last week, project demographics. Um, so uh, basically Matt took that Google Doc, put it into a PR over here, which will then essentially add that to the website and that will be the official uh, version of that. And that's what that looks like. It's um, for the spring 2022 release. So that's what that process looks like. Um, I did the issue for event accessibility, but I didn't check any boxes yet. So Matt's ahead of me. It's a race and he's gonna win. <laughs> Um, so that's that's what uh, the process. That's how the process goes. Um, but since we already kind of finished that one up last week, that one's pretty much ready. Event accessibility. We worked on it a lot last week, but I wanted to make sure um, that everybody had one more chance to kind of look at it really quick. So, do we mind if we take five minutes, not even three minutes, and just read through this and just add any any final thoughts on it? Works Is that cool? Yeah. Um, here's the link. I'll drop it in the chat too. I think I'm going to make a meaningful. Here is the link. I'm going to drop it in the chat. What was that, Enoch? <laughs> no, I was saying, I think. I was saying, I think I'm also going to make a meme for here's the link. I'll drop it in the chat. Just <laughs> yes, that would be perfect. <laughs> we, we do that all the time. Here's the link. Uh... Oh, I should take this part out. I'm deleting that. Yep. Oh, 
Um, Matt, I also had a question about this link, this chaos data ethics document, because that's still kind of a work in progress. So I've just been linking to this main blob thing. Yeah, I had the same issue in the metric that I was working on. I just left it under the hopes that we'll get it done before the release. Okay. Because we have a 30 day period. Should I just take this out then? No, I just leave it in there. Okay. Is what I'm saying. And then oh, we, oh, can, okay. we can clean it up. When uh, we haven't actually within done. those 30 days. Yeah, because that's not really the metric. This is a link to a thing. And if we don't get it done, we'll just remove it. And if we do get it done, we'll update the, the link. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also, just as a point of note, I went through the issues in the DEI working group repo um, because several people had opened issues mentioning different ideas around this metric that we captured here. Um, so I, um, anything that we missed, we, I put in and closed those issues. So I think there were like two or three. Cool. Uh, one issue I actually, while we're talking about this was, where was this? Um, Nico had opened something about colorblindness. Um, and I, we did include that in our event metric, but I didn't know if we want to leave this issue open for other kinds of documentation within a project. I always thought of this one as broader than just an event. Okay. Yeah, this in, one's, it's currently in project and community on the spreadsheet as well yeah okay perfect then we'll leave it open um and just i that's the point of reference then some things that i added from other ideas were this speaker guide with accessibility guidance which i thought was a great idea and there was one other one maybe that was it yeah that might have been Oh, and then I added Nico's uh, references down here. So I've got something to propose here. I um, just linked a document in the main minutes. Um, I'm not sure how far along this is for attention to colorblindness, but it looks like we have a pretty, pretty full like not complete, but pretty full um, document for that metric on its own as well. It was kind of just floating. It wasn't in the spreadsheet, but um, I'm wondering if we could just uh, before, I guess it would have to go in the next release, but maybe at that time we could pick the um, colorblindness part out of the accessibility. And as we find different aspects of accessibility, we could just take them out of the broad accessibility metric. And it would just be uh, the kind of the placeholder for the things we don't have in place as a metric yet. I did not realize this was happening. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it happened like uh, before this year started. So so we would essentially reference that metric then as we do like same kind of thing for family friendliness. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just an idea. Like uh, the, the uh, accessibility metric would be a kind of a catch all. But as we wanted to add more details to certain aspects of accessibility, we would put them in the project and community section. Okay. So in the meantime, how, um, since we don't have that metric developed quite yet, how do we, do we want to say, say include it for now? Without the link. Yeah, without the link. I'm gonna put it in, okay. Web, so instead of this website and on-site event signage, just put, or maybe in addition, attention to colorblindness. Do we want to say in progress? It kind of dates the the metric, but 
like that? Or how should we say that? Uh, I would just leave it. What I'm saying, I would just leave it off right now. now. And once we create it, we'll link to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anything else that we see on here that we wanna change before we move on? If you did not add your name in here and you would like to as a contributor, please do that. Mm, same holds true for the project demographics. Right now, all I have is Elizabeth and myself. And which, I'm pretty sure we didn't do that much work on it. I mean, uh, I didn't, I know Matt did, so. <laughs> I'm sure there are not, many other people that worked on that. If you want to add your name to the project demographics metric, could you please put your name in the minutes at least? And I can I can add your name. All right. Thanks, everybody. You're awesome. Um, let's go ahead and move on. So we have about 20 minutes left, just in case we have other stuff. <clears throat> so um, privacy ethics docs. I know last week we talked quite a lot about that. Um, Matt, it's totally fine if there is no update because there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, it's honestly the biggest update is I think it's moving along pretty positively. We've combined privacy and ethics into a single document. They were two or four or 10 or 20 Seven, different documents something and so we've combined them into a single document which seems to work pretty well um so right now i'm in the i think i'm in the ethics section and we have a bunch of listed points in the ethics section that need to be put into more of a narrative form so that's the next to do um do, where where do we want to do that work like i i don't i feel bad like that's all just kind of falling on your shoulders is that a common would that be common what it has been happening in okay common. right right okay lucas and um sophia have been helping in that regard as well yes okay and we've been doing it pretty much asynchronously okay perfect yeah as long as it's not just on you to like make all this stuff up and <laughs> like write this whole thing. No, we have all the content. It's really okay. honestly, it's just a formatting issue at this point. Okay. And and trying to do things like making sure the section sizes are somewhat consistent with each other, that like the privacy section is two pages and that the ethics section isn't like 17 pages. You know what I mean? We're just we're just trying to get the point across that these are things that you might want to think about. Um and here's how you can move forward. You, as a consumer of these metrics, can move forward. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for doing that. That's going to make a huge difference, and it's going to be amazing when it's all done. So I'm very excited about that. And, you know, like, honestly, I, I don't know, maybe it's specific to us, but I feel like that's kind of something, you know, that other, other communities struggle with, too, is, like, setting these kind of policies in place like where do you draw the line of like legal advice and you know guidance and yeah so might be another interesting journey to share if you if ever we want probably so it'd probably be worth a blog post once that's done you know not to volunteer you for more work but <laughs> it'd be great if you could write that Matt. well the awesome. blog posts are usually they're ain't pretty simple anymore they can just be like an intro paragraph that's like you probably care about privacy and ethics here's something from the chaos project yeah, it might help you in that regard. All right. Anybody have any questions or comments about that? If you want a little more context and you aren't sure, um, there's a bunch of context down here from last week. So like all the docs, essentially, if you want to go and read them all, you can. It's your prerogative to do that if you'd like. It'll take you about an hour, but that's okay. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and move on then. If we don't have anything, um, we wanted to share from DEI badging, we wanted to share this doodle. So please fill it out. Um, we're trying to land on a date to have a virtual badging celebration slash review or appreciation event. Um, that will be, it's being um, 
handled in the DEI badging, I don't want to say working group, but kind of our group. <laughs> um, and Katie, who's on the call today, is kind of taking the lead on that. So Katie, is there anything you want to add? Um, sorry, there we go. Um, um, I guess just if people can get the doodle done and we don't have a restriction on the number of people that can attend, um, there aren't, I guess, do we have a decision on who we wanted to um, invite outside of the meetings? Elizabeth, did we want to invite the people who had submitted to the badging? Yeah, yeah, we're going to invite them. Um, we're going to invite the reviewers, of course. We're going to um, put the doodle out with um, the chaos, the bigger chaos community as well. Um, so yeah, we'll try to get, at least try to get them to fill the doodle out. If they don't, then we can at least invite them when we have a, a final date. And that will be held on Big Blue Button. Um, yes, that will be on the leading bit software the big blue button they've donated the space. And that way there's no restrictions on number of people who can participate. Um, and the agenda is TBD right now. It's gonna be pretty loose, just kind of hanging out. And we'll probably have like a, like a rough schedule of you know, how the event will go, but um, it's just meant to be a fun thing. So anybody have questions on that? No, thanks for doing that. I'm wondering one a thought that I've I guess just came up and it might be more we talk about it in badging too is maybe a highlight reel of some of the things that accomplishments over the last year from our reviewers. So and other like metrics um, accomplishments that have happened because of our like because of people applying for badges and the reviewers. Not quite sure what that would look like yet, but maybe like a little slide or set or something. Yeah, with some just sharing some information about, you know, like how the badging program is going and yeah, accomplishments. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So um, worth mentioning here, um, it would be, uh, I think, a two year anniversary time ish around the two year anniversary as well of the, like the initiation of the Summer of Code projects and kind of the beginning of the badging initiative too. Uh, it started in 2020, so yeah, two years. If you wanted to give it a tagline and something um, remarkable about it, so. Awesome. I like that, okay, more ideas. Yeah, we're at the doodle stage and getting the dates arranged and then we'll come up with the schedule and all of the other things. Also, after I'm more fully caffeinated. And if anybody has any other ideas or questions, comments, um, you can hop in the badging uh, Slack channel and drop that in there because I think we're all in there now, maybe. All right, um, the next one is, I just wanted to let Matt and or Enoch talk about the badging bot because there's they have some amazing things in store. I'm super excited about this work, like really excited because I think it has bigger implications too for the whole chaos project on just how we onboard people, especially code contributors. So um, Enoch or Matt, do you wanna just kind of give a quick update on, or like a quick overview on what you all have been talking about? Yeah, Matt. Okay, I don't know, because I had a chance in the other group, so. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Like, you did it well last time, so. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yep. Um, so um, we were sharing with um, the budging, um, in the weekly budging meeting that um, while I was going through the budging bot code, um, realized um, there could be some issues that um, we can take care of since um, the maintenance has been really on a low scale. And um, yet um, this bot is in use. So I was talking to Matt and I was telling him, 
we could actually come up with some 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 program to see that um, we can maintain this boat slowly as um, we wait for maybe better maintenance. So um, all the ideas that were there were brought up. I brought them up and then me and Matt looked through them and added some details to them so that um, we can see how we better address them. So I told Matt we could bring it up in the working groups so that they know that we are up to something and um, so that um, the whole community knows who's responsible for it too. So we are in them in the in the priority order from up there to down here. So we thought it's good we first do a documentation because previously whoever came up with that didn't actually put a documentation that was really um, welcoming to the, it was informative if you look in the handbook, but um, guiding through how to get started, how to contribute, stuff like that. Then also Matt was, um, I, I brought up the idea of configuration and cloning and Matt added on hosting the bot to another platform so that we make it robust. Yeah, um, also um, making um, tests. I realized that um, there are some scripts that are um, actually for testing, but they're broken and they don't work. So Matt, I was telling Matt that um, we need to take care of testing the bots and all the code that goes in the bot so that in future, we actually have few things breaking if we are to actually make this so robust. Yeah, then um, the two last things that were very important we were seeing a way of um, actually converting and uploading um, reviews automatically to the bot without first having to generate a template. So someone just goes to the website and just fills in a certain form or a certain, a certain doc and automatically when they click review, um, they don't need to go to GitHub or even um, edit a markdown template. Yeah, and the last one was um, automatically adding reviewers. So if reviewers here in the DEI are interested in participating in making reviews, automatically when they sign up somewhere, um, the bot picks it up and adds them to the list. And then we can assign them according to how many reviews they're making, according to how many reviews they have completed and according to their availability. So stuff like that. So Matt was actually suggesting most of um, the algorithm work of how the reviewers will be managed by the board. So yeah, that's in brief about all of the ideas there. Um, we were thinking we could create a document. I actually added it up there on the first um, idea in the last um, sub section that collaborating on this doc in budget board. Yeah, so we, we wanted to start with the docs. It's really empty, there is nothing in it. I actually just created it so that um, we can work collaboratively on to seeing what parts of the documentation so far need to be added onto the, onto, onto the documentation that we may come up with. Then we can go that order up to down there. So that's briefly about the budget board improvements that I was, the chat I was having with, with Matt. Yeah, well, I'd only add that, um, that that the link to the very basic algorithm idea, it's a very complicated um, complicated setup that we're working on for the algorithm. If you click on the picture there, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's about yeah. as complicated as it gets. We have four things we're gonna use to, to assign reviewers based on their preference and all this stuff. But um, it will, we'll, we'll give you more updates as we go. We're probably gonna have a doc for each of these items. And uh, and just have a just have a kind of a branch of documentation that's focused on the badging uh, bot as well. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> and Matt was like, um, "Oh, the algorithm is really something that is kind of tricky." And yeah. also the converting of um, the docs automatic the, of um, the forms automatically so that the bot picks them up and someone just receives all results from one place is also some, some other tricky thing. So that's why they're actually down there at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's it. Super awesome. Yes, thanks for thinking through this. Um, does, does any of this change the scope of what the bot is intended to do or what it 
is currently doing right now. I see like there's the ad reviewers. Yeah. That makes yeah. the pot a little bigger. It yeah. seems like okay. It might be worth explaining the the kind of the pain points that we that I've experienced in managing the bot and how other people have experienced too. Okay. Um, I can I can quickly list them off. It's just that like manually having to manually assign reviewers because we didn't have the uh, time or the effort to put into an algorithm that assigns them is something we're going to take care of. And then also we have a uh, we might need to move out of the glitch platform to have a little more control over the instance the badging bot instance okay. itself. And uh, the, the last one would just be um, the, 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 the documentation and getting people on board into the badging bot. I've tried it before and it hasn't been good. <laughs> so like making sure that people understand it a little better if they want to read it on their own time. Okay. Um, one thought on the reviewers, would it be possible to include the, an ability for the bot to ping reviewers? if a review seems to have stopped or something like that? Yeah, with our own instance and in on like a cloud host, um, we can do pretty much anything that JavaScript and, and Bash would be able to do. Okay, okay, because I'm thinking That's of things that you do, Matt, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the, GitHub, the GitHub platform has done a good job of pinging people when they, when they get assigned. And that's really the focus right. of that. It would, it would be if we could also add an email kind of hook as well, but I'm not sure it would, I mean, no, about nine times out of 10, a reviewer will get there within the day if they get assigned. So it's been great so far. But um, yeah, uh, looking, looking forward to more improvement. Cool. And just to um, add a little more context for people who may be not familiar with the badging bot. So this is the thing that's responsible for actually assigning the badge and figuring out what their score was and um, kind of manages that whole process. So um, a lot of it is manual right now, as Matt was saying. So this is super helpful to, to help it be a little more scalable in the future and re rely less on manual intervention. Um, and also makes it better for people who are applying for a badge and better for newcomers to the chaos project who are looking for something to do, looking for a way to contribute. Um, having that documentation there is a great, um, a great, um, introduction onto, you know, here's how chaos works. Because I think that this, the DEI badging is like so compartmentalized and it's easy to understand what it is and what it does, you know, whereas some of the other stuff that we work on is a little more abstract, but this seems pretty clear of like, okay, this is what is going on here. So I think it's a really good introduction for onboarding to chaos in general, a good candidate for that. So kudos to you all. We added a super secret meeting to the chaos calendar. We'll, we'll, we'll add um, for uh, people who are working on this bot. So right now it's just Matt and Enoch, but um, eventually that placeholder will be open to more people as soon as like things get off the ground a little more. So yeah, I guess it's not super secret if I put it in the meeting, but it is super secret. So there still, you go. Still sort of secret. <laughs> That's right, secretish. <laughs> All right, we have only three minutes left. Thank you, Enoch and Matt. You're awesome. We heart you. You're great. Um, but we have three minutes left, and I see um, there is a couple more things to talk about. Matt, did you want to bring some updates from the Asia? We can do this next week. That's okay. Okay. Nothing urgent to mention there. Okay. AP means Asia Pacific. And then real quick, the call for participation in She Code Africa. We do need a mentor who can code. Um, kind of struggling with that application because you do we do have to list out the tasks for a Slack bot. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested in helping Ruth and I mentor this person. Or maybe we can mention it also in the community call next week. Um, hi. Um, so Elizabeth, if uh, so, it, it's required to have technical skills, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to help, but <laughs> I don't have. No, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. It might be worth. Uh, I, I believe. Um, I believe um, among like you and Ruth, uh, there there would be enough there that we could work out the technical part of it, or we could find. Um, someone closer to the time, as long as we have at least uh, one or two people to commit to the role. 
we can have, I, I think we can have more than two mentors. Okay, that would be perfect. Cause you know, Ruth and I are gonna co-mentor I think um, also. So it would not be like a full-time mentorship. It would just be, you know, if this person gets stuck on the code and um, needs some technical guidance, like, I don't know that I'm the best person cause I haven't written a Slack button in literally 10 years. So um, yeah. What's the um, what's yeah. the period for that um, for that SheCode Africa mentorship? I believe it is April and May. I think oh, okay. I can double check. Okay, well we'll sort it out. Um, we'll we'll figure that out. I'm meeting with Ruth tomorrow, so we'll talk about it. We'll we'll get it all sorted out. Honestly, I think if you think about mentorship as like kind of helping people through a complex process as opposed to just being there for technical support, that's that's better. And then if there are technical questions that within the chaos project, we know how to find those answers. That's yeah, kind just, of my approach, but. Yeah, that's that's kind of the approach we wanna take. I just didn't wanna leave like, the, like every micro task to be like, oh, the student has to sort that out. <laughs> the student has to figure out how to write, you know, like I wanted to maybe provide a little, more, but um, yeah, Ruth and I will talk about it tomorrow too, okay. and see kind of where where we are. Maybe it's fine. She's been through the project or the program before, so maybe it's fine to to leave it a little more ambiguous and not have to have everything immediately sorted. Um, but right. okay, you know, we'll holler at you all if we need some help for sure. And then we're out of time, but I see this um, badging bot Google Summer of Code link real quick. Here's where we're dropping the ideas for our Google Summer of Code projects. So if I'm assuming somebody put this on here to look for more DEI ideas. Uh, either more ideas or um, more, we also need mentors for the for the badging bot stuff. So we'll, we'll be, I'll, I'll talk about that more next time. Okay. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Sorry, cut that short a little bit, but we'll bring that up next week for sure. All right, thanks everybody. I think we're we're good. And I hope you have a, a good rest of your day. Thanks for coming today. Thanks, we'll everybody. see you later. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thanks all. Yeah.